Hello, and welcome to the Demoet series, TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Demoets are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this Demoet, we discuss using Java Message Service, or JMS, with TDV triggers and stored procedures. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining JMS and outlining its importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of using JMFs with TDV triggers and procedures. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoette. Let's begin by discussing what JMS is and why it is important for our customers. Java Message Service is a specification for message-oriented middleware. It uses a message broker to enable communication between message publishers and subscribers. The broker-based architecture enables messaging that is reliable, loosely coupled, and asynchronous. TDV can use JMS for many different use cases. For example, incoming JMS messages can cause TDV triggers to fire, and these triggers can subsequently execute stored procedures or create TDV events or create emails, and so on. TDV stored procedures can also create and publish JMS messages, enabling loosely coupled communication with other systems. TDV can also use JMS as a transport binding for SOAP data sources, but this capability is beyond the scope of this demo. JMS is important to our customers for a wide variety of use cases. External systems can send JMS messages to TDV in order to trigger any type of action desired in TDV. Conversely, TDV developers can create scripts that publish messages in order to communicate with external systems. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo of using JMS with TDV. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. A system administrator for a large enterprise is building a general purpose performance monitoring portal for all enterprise systems. He uses ActiveMQ, a JMS implementation, to publish messages to many systems, including TDV. The message to TDV requests current performance information on a specific TDV resource named in the message. When TDV receives the JMS message, it fires a trigger that executes a stored procedure that runs a performance test on the specified resource. TDV then replies by publishing a JMS message containing the performance data. Begin by going to activemq.apache.org and learning about ActiveMQ. ActiveMQ is a very rich and sophisticated product, and we can only scratch its surface in this brief demo. You can download ActiveMQ from this site and install it. Installation is very simple. Just extract the download to a directory of your choice. One installation note is that you should set your Java home environment variable to the location of your JDK. Copy the ActiveMQ jar file from the top level installation directory of ActiveMQ. Paste it into the apps server lib directory of the TDV installation folder. You can easily build the trigger and SQL script used in this demo from scratch. However, users may access a car file in the demo at repository that contains these resources. We'll be using data sources from the TDV examples folder, so no new data sources are necessary. Now we're ready to use ActiveMQ. To start it on Windows, open a command window, navigate to the bin folder of the ActiveMQ installation, and type ActiveMQ start as shown here. The ActiveMQ administration homepage can be found at the URL shown here. The default user ID and password are admin. Go to the queues page and create a queue named Demoet JMS Q1, as shown here. The queue appears in the queue table. 
Now we can connect TDV to the ActiveMQ instance. Open TDV Manager and click Configuration, Connectors. The Connector Management page appears. Click Add Connector. On the Info tab, enter a connector name, group name, and annotation as shown here. On the JMS via JNDI tab, enter the initial context factory, JNDI provider URL, and connection factory information, which is shown here for readability. Replace training host with the URL of your ActiveMQ instance. Click OK and the connector is created. Now we need to define two resources in TDV, a trigger that will fire when a JMS event is received, and a SQL script that the trigger will execute to run the performance test requested by the JMS event. To begin, just define an empty placeholder script for pperf test. That will allow us to begin by defining the trigger first, which should make the demo easier to understand. Here is the trigger definition. As a best practice, always disable and save the trigger before making changes, then enable and save when you are done. Select JMS event as the condition type. Enter the name of the connector we defined in TDV Manager. For destination, enter the name of the queue we defined earlier in ActiveMQ. Note that you must prepend dynamic queues forward slash to this name. Now enter a selector value enclosed in single quotes as shown here. JMS type is a standard header property in JMS events, and we are telling the trigger to fire only on events where this value is equal to demo at request. We'll set this property in ActiveMQ when we fire events later. For action type, select Execute Procedure. Browse to the procedure path of the pperf test script. We'll use this text string as a parameter for the script. Now let's flesh out the SQL script. First, we'll define the variables we need for logging and for calling the performance testing procedure that is the heart of our use case. The call to get environment returns the payload of the JMS message. Our use case calls for this payload to be the fully qualified name of a TDV view. We plug this view name into a select statement. Logging is a great way to test and debug a script. Log entries are written to TDV server log in the TDV logs directory. Now we call this performance utility procedure SQLPerf, which ships as a standard component in TDV. We pass our SQL statement, specify that it should be run on five threads simultaneously, and perform as many iterations of the query as possible in 10 seconds. Results are returned in the output parameters shown here. When the results come back, we print them to the console and log them. This is useful for debugging. More importantly for our use case though, we need to return the results in a JMS message. First, we'll set the JMS type property. In the incoming request message, we will set this to demo at request, since we told the trigger to fire only on messages with that value. For the reply event here, We'll set the property to demo at reply. Format the response for the message payload. And use the standard TDV procedure lib JMS send text message to publish the reply event through our JMS connector to the appropriate queue. Recall that we named this queue demo at JMS Q1 in ActiveMQ. To access it programmatically, we need to prepend dynamic queues forward slash. Print and log the JMS event, and our script is complete. Now we are ready to run the use case end to end. From the ActiveMQ Administration Console, 
click Send. For destination, enter the queue name. ActiveMQ calls this field type, but it is actually the standard header property named JMS type that we saw in our SQL script earlier. Enter the value demo at request, which is the selector value used in the TDV trigger. In the message body, enter the fully qualified name of a TDV view. Here we use the view supplier view from this TDV examples folder. Click send to fire the JMS event. The TDV server log shows the path of execution. The JMS message was received and caused the trigger to fire. The performance procedure executes and the JMS response message is sent. On the ActiveMQ Administration Console, navigate to Queues and click our Demo at Queue. Choose the latest message in the queue. Note that it has a type value of Demo at Reply, which we set in the SQL script. In the message details, we see the payload we defined in the SQL script. We have successfully sent a JMS message from a remote system to TDV. TDV used this event to fire a trigger, which executed a procedure and replied with the results to the remote system in a JMS message. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. Java Message Service is a specification for message-oriented middleware. It uses a message broker to enable communication between message publishers and subscribers. The broker-based architecture enables messaging that is reliable, loosely coupled, and asynchronous. TDV can use JMS for many different use cases. For example, incoming JMS messages can cause TDV triggers to fire and these triggers can subsequently execute stored procedures, or create TDV events, or create emails, and so on. TDV stored procedures can also create and publish JMS messages, enabling loosely coupled communication with other systems. TDV can also use JMS as a transport binding for SOAP data sources, but this capability is beyond the scope of this demo. JMS is important to our customers for a wide variety of use cases. External systems can send JMS messages to TDV in order to trigger any type of action desired in TDV. Conversely, TDV developers can create scripts that publish messages in order to communicate with external systems. Thank you.